Hello and welcome back to Live Drawing with Octopolis. My name is Brian Miller and today we're going to have a ton of fun drawing some of our favorite spooky serial characters like Booberry, Count Chocula, and Frankenberry. Hey, good to see you, Monique. It's been a little while. Good to see you here. Welcome, everybody. So, should be a fun day today drawing these spooky serial characters. Just kind of keeping our October Halloween theme going. I know we've done the uh, the hitchhiking ghost last week, and we've done some Ghostbusters, and so now I thought our classic spooky serial monsters would be right right up our alley, right the way to go. Probably do this one in full color today, so it should be a good time. But good to see you guys. Hope everybody had a good weekend, and I hope your week is off to a great start. Mine has been, we did our our group class for our Patreon members today, and we had a really good turnout. We talked about some of the new features in Procreate 5 for iPad. It was really fun. Monique's like, oh my god, it's my favorite serial people. Right? I mean, this only comes once a year, so you've got to jump on and have fun while we can. I love October. I love Halloween. So I've just been trying to make a special effort to draw some some fun Halloween sketches. And then we've got a really cool Star Wars sketch coming up soon. And it's going to be a big one. So you know we did that big 11 by 7 by 17 Jedi sketch. We're going to do another big one. This one will be uh, a Mandalorian based so it should be fun. Uh, Monique says, I used to eat Booberry as a kid. Yeah, I think Booberry and Frankenberry, one of those is Christy's favorite. I think it just depends on which day you ask her which one of those might be her favorite. <laughs> but she does love them too. So much fun. And I'm, I'm a chocolate guy, so I always got Count Chocula, but... Frankenberry and Booberry are pretty darn awesome too. But I just, I've been drawing all these ghost and spooky guys and I just couldn't resist throwing these into the mix. And no, I'm not drawing Yummy Mummy or any others because these are my three favorites. I acknowledge the existence of others. Um, he says, I ate Frankenberry too. Never cared for Count Chocula that much. Yeah, I get that. I'm a chocoholic, so I think I went in for all the chocolate cereals. The Cocoa Pebbles and Count Chocula and... I don't know, I guess Cookie Crisp doesn't really count because it was chocolate chips, but I still... I still like that. No wonder I have a sweet tooth. I ate all that stuff as a kid. I don't remember what other chocolate cereals there were, but... I know Cocoa Pebbles was pretty high on the list. Hey, good to see you, Les Dudas. Drawing our favorite spooky Halloween cereal mascots today. Gonna paint these up in color. Good to see you, Quinch Press. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Hope everybody had a great weekend and looking forward to this week. Getting closer to Halloween. And I don't know about how it is where you live, but out here the weather's finally starting to cool off. And we still may almost hit 90 or 90 plus today. So it's still unseasonably warm. But let me tell you, just having it get below 100 has been so nice. Been, been able to sit out on the patio a few afternoons. I have a little happy hour out there. So it's just been nice to finally have that crushing soul-crushing heat wave end. Uh, Monique says, Jeff loves Cocoa Pebbles, Cocoa Puffs, and other chocolate cereals. Oh yeah, I remember Cocoa Puffs. I forgot about Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, good to see you guys. I'm surprised we don't have a um, an Evan showing up yet, but maybe our Evan sighting will come later today. I did see him earlier during our Patreon group class. I think it was the best turnout for a group class ever, so that was fun.
Definitely hoping to get more people involved. But let me know what you guys are up to. Because I'm super excited today. I want to hear about you guys. If you have big... I mean, obviously nobody has big Halloween plans this year. But even if your plans are to just stay in and watch movies, that's cool. I want to hear about it. Um, did you guys see this... Um, Hocus Pocus one night only reunion special thing they're doing. I don't know if I should be excited or afraid for this, but I did see something about it. I think they're trying to test the waters people would be interested in like a Hocus Pocus sequel or something, but who knows? Can you catch lightning in a bottle twice? I don't know. I'll tell you what I do know though, is that uh, still behind on Lovecraft Country, Waiting on Christy on that one, but I did start season two of The Boys. So, only only two episodes in, so too early to gauge how this season's going to be, but it is kind of nice to see some of those familiar faces from last season, so that's been good. Uh, Monique says, I spent my afternoon deleting accounts someone made using one of my secondary email addresses. Ugh, that's no fun. Yeah, Christy and I got a uh, lewd video link on Facebook Messenger from one of her tennis friends. And we were immediately were both like, uh, hey, dude, I think you've been hacked. <laughs> Clearly, this isn't you. He's... He, he wrote her back. He's like, yeah, I was hacked. Sorry. Uh, Coach says, I finished Lovecraft Country. I might need to re rewatch the finale. Well, I'm still really behind, but I think, you know, Christy's schedule has just been so nuts right now. She's got eight classes, which is pretty unprecedented. Um, so, plus a lot of other things. So, we, we're, we're really behind on television right now. But... We were just saying today that we'd like to get caught up on that one, so hopefully, hopefully soon. Quinch is like, I really want you to finish the season so we can discuss. Um, Monique says, wiped out their Instagram, Discord server, and Samsung Cloud. Oh, wow, they were getting crazy with your other email address, huh? I guess there are a lot of like publicly open Discord servers, so I could see somebody going in and running some good scams on people there. Um, Quinch says, The Owl House comes to Disney Plus the day before Halloween. I might be watching that on Halloween. Yeah, man. That's a, it's a good one. I am two or three episodes into season two of Gravity Falls right now. I know I sound like a broken record, guys, but man, going back and rewatching those in order has been so rewarding. Like, if you even like that show a little bit and you have Disney+, Plus, it's just so worth it to see them with no commercials, not even having to worry about fast forward or anything, just no commercials, and watching them in order. It's just... I mean, I already love that show, and I just love it so much more now. Because it's, it's just, watch them in order is so much better. It's been a real treat. And I think, I know I watched all of Owl House in order. I saw it in order, so. But when it comes on Disney+, Plus, I'll, I'll probably rewatch it. Because really, I don't know what's what's out there to take the place of either of those shows right now really let 
Yeah, that's that's been a good one. And I forgot I forgot what else I saw was coming out soon, but it's just been nice to see. Oh, did you guys see Hubie Halloween? Let me know if you saw that one on Netflix. Uh, Monique says, yeah, all unverified accounts. They didn't have access to my email, just use my address, but that gave me the ability to do the password resets, access their accounts and delete them. Um, I changed my email password anyway. Yeah, better safe than sorry, right? Let's do this says, ha ha, it took me three sit downs, but I watched TV Halloween. Yeah, Christy and I, I won't say we suffered through it. That's unkind, but it was what I expected it to be, you know, which was just a dumb Adam Sandler film. Um, I don't think there was any surprise there. Some of the cameos were fun. Some of his friends that were in it were fun. But overall, it was it was pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> but there were some fun moments, so I'm okay with it. Um, I don't hate on it like some people did, but, you know, am I going to watch it again? Probably not. But it, it had some... I like the idea of the thermos as a gadget. That kind of got me. Um, like, if I was a kid, I would totally think that was cool, so... You know, and I think that's that's what Adam Sandler is good at, right? He's making films that are fun for kids. And so even as adults, if we're like, well, that wasn't the best, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not some kid out there that didn't love it. And some of the some of the, you know, my Rudolph I thought was hilarious and Colin Quinn and makeup for his like one minute cameo was pretty funny. Um, oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, doing some, uh, I do a lot of uh, sketch commissions on this channel, so we're drawing our favorite spooky serial mascots today. But thank you for following. Um, uh, Quinch Press says, I was waiting to hear what others said about Hubie, and now I'm definitely going to pass. No, you have to watch it, Quinch, just so you can joining the conversation with the rest of us. Um, Let's do this says, I liked that he used some of the more recent SNL people too. Yeah, I did like that. I, I actually liked that quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think that was a surprise. And of course, having Ray Liotta in there, I was like, what? That was crazy. Uh, but it has its moments for sure. Like, I'll put it this way. I've definitely watched holiday movies that were much, much worse. So it's not like it was, you know, it's not like I couldn't sit through it. Oh, thanks for sharing the social media links there, Stream uh, Quench Press. I appreciate it. Yeah, Monique says, I didn't think it was terrible. Yeah, I didn't think it was terrible either. It, it wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't, I wouldn't put it in the bad category. Um That's just like I saw they're doing a sequel to the the Santa Claus North Pole movie with them. Um... Ah, oh, crap. Here we go, guys. Here's my brain. So, yeah, so Netflix is doing their Escape from New York Christmas sequel with Kurt Russell um, and Goldie Hawn. And I thought the first one last year was a little bit of an accident, right? Like, it clearly wasn't that great of a Christmas movie, but it just kind of came out at the right time that everyone watched it. And so it was like a surprise hit. And they even admitted as much at the time, right? Um, but the trailer for the second one looks like it's significantly better than the first one. So, um, um, so that new Christmas movie, I think... It, it has some potential. And Kurt Russell does a good Santa, so... No, I won't hate on that. I think that's fine. Monique says, I saw Eight Crazy Nights in the theater, so that made it even more disappointing. I'm trying to remember if I saw that one in the theater or not. Hmm. I don't recall. I know, I mean, I know I saw it, but I don't remember if I saw it in the theater or not. So 
Someone's going to remind me what this new Christmas movie on Netflix is called. But the trailer looks good. Goldie Hawn, I think, will do good as Mrs. Claus. The plot line appears to be similar to Nightmare Before Christmas if if they were villains, <laughs> right? They're going to steal steal the Christmas spirit or the Christmas star or whatever it is and use it for evil. It also looks like there might be some sort of fight between like Santa's reindeer and the villains animals like tigers or snow leopards or something. So I could be down for that. Uh, Quinch Press says Christmas Chronicles. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. So... You know, the first one just seemed like it was a whoopsie, like a, hey, we'll just throw this out here and see if anybody watches it. And then it kind of, you know, took off. So now they're like, okay, okay. People will, people actually watch that. Let's throw a bunch of money at it and make a sequel. You know how Netflix does. <laughs> Quinch Press is like, yes, that's it. I just checked on IMDb. Thanks, Quinch. Yeah, if you haven't seen the trailer for the new one, I think at least the trailer makes it look better than the first one. So what's your favorite? Booberry, Frankenberry, Count Chocula. I already said how much I was a chocolate aholic when I was a kid, so. I think Christy's favorite, I think, is Frankenberry. Which is weird, because she doesn't like strawberry stuff, but I guess because it's cereal, it just tastes plenty. Oh, okay, so I got a posture check, oh, and to hydrate, and not to learn Arabic. I mean, I could probably come up with an Arabic word. Oh, I got one for you. Jinn. So in Arabic, jinn is ghost or spirit. So since it's Halloween, uh, that'll work. So like if something spooky happens or if we're out in the dig field and something disappears, we say, oh, it must have been the gin. Must have been a ghost. So there you go. You got you got a bonus lesson anyway. Bonus lesson. Are you guys ready for Tiki Tuesday tonight? I know I am. I started working yesterday on taking um, one of our Tiki Tuesday sketches and turning it into a finished digital illustration. So I still have a ways to go, but I have a good start. And then today, as my example in our group class, I was using the Kahiki Club artwork so now that I used it as the example for Procreate, I'll probably get in there and finish it sometime too. So that's going good. And uh, I don't see Chow Time on here, but he's got my turnaround drawing from last week and he might start playing around with some sculpts and stuff. So we'll see if he gets to that or not. Um, Monique said they had the gin on Supernatural. That's how I heard of them. Oh, that's really cool. I feel like that's one of those shows that I would really like. And I probably missed it just because up until the last year or two, I wasn't really one for watching very many shows. And then... And now I seem to I seem to watch a lot more than I used to. Monique's like, yay, Kahiki! Did, did you guys see the... I didn't see uh, Saturday Night Live. Like, I haven't watched it. But I saw on YouTube they had some of it and... One of the skits was like for eBay and it was like, you know, you thought during quarantine you were going to, you know, master your fitness or you were going to learn to play the guitar or you were going to learn to, you know, do something else, some like hobby kind of thing. But the whole point is that they're like, but instead you sit around and watch streaming shows all day and they're just like selling all the stuff on eBay that they never used. And I was like, yeah, that kind of seems like how this whole pandemic thing is gone, right? I mean... 
at the beginning we're like, oh, we're quarantined or not quarantined. We're we're in lockdown. I'm going to learn a new skill. And you go, oh, I blinked and it was October. What happened? Uh, Quinch Press says, you aren't a refuse and recycling specialist in training, Christy, but I'll take the Arabic lesson anyway. Thanks. That was a good one, Quinch. Um, Monique says, it's on one of the streaming channels. Oh, good to know. Uh, Let's do this. Says, SNL's been so funny. Yeah, I think, I think they've been doing pretty good. Um, I know a couple of people or a couple of the media places have had a critique saying that they're trying too hard to make the show like it was before the pandemic. And that might be a valid critique, but I think overall, overall they've been pretty fresh and, um, you know, showing people wearing masks and different things like that. So it seems to be dealing with reality head on, which I kind of appreciate. And some of the skits have been pretty funny, so, you know, it's like they got to hit the reset button and have a little bit more leeway. I think especially some of the pre-filmed segments that some of the actors are doing between, you know, weeks and stuff have been really good. Uh, Quinch says, Hulu has SNL. Yes, I think that's true. Yeah. I haven't watched it on Hulu, but I've seen a couple of the skits pop up on YouTube or whatever and checked them out. I don't know who designed Frankenberry, but I like that his fingernails are strawberries. I always thought that was a clever design thing. Um, Monique says, I think Jim Carrey does a pretty funny Biden. Yeah, I think so too. I think he's been pretty funny as it for sure. Now I know Marty Nodell designed the Pillsbury Doughboy and some other media stuff, but I don't know who designed these guys. I had, used to have a friend in advertising who would probably know, but because I think these guys were all designed in the early '70s, maybe like '70, 70, '71, or something like that. I should know. I don't know why I don't know. Oh, we, I, knew, I knew what you meant, Monique. Yeah, Monique just wanted to clarify that she meant Supernatural was on one of the streaming services. Um, not sure who has it besides CW. Not sure if it's Prime Netflix or HBO. Yeah, I, I, I think I've seen it pop up, but I'm not sure which either. I did see, though, Disney announced that uh, last week that you know Disney Plus is going to be their main focus for the immediate future, which... Um, I think it makes sense. I'm still really sad for all the people that have lost their jobs at Disney. Um, but at the same time, I think that these movie studios just thinking they're going to sit back and wait for the theaters to reopen is a bit of a pipe dream. Because even if the theaters do reopen, you know, are they going to have the same type of crowds? And probably not, at least not immediately. And I don't want the theaters to fail, not by any means, but... Uh, you know, these movie studios own these giant streaming platforms, so it makes sense that for them to take advantage of that and start to release more content that way, so I think this will be like a wake-up call for all of them to do just that. Uh, Coach says, I haven't been watching, but I was reading that Carrie's Biden was too much like Jim Carrey and not enough like Biden. I don't know that that's fair. I, I, you know, he's only done it what twice now? Two two episodes, I think, maybe, maybe three. I'm not sure, but the most recent one I thought was pretty pretty good. I mean, he's Jim Carrey. All the characters look like Jim Carrey. Time for some color. Mix up these paints. One of the things I like about these character designs is they all have these like really lazy looking eyes. Not sure why. Is that like some subliminal thing? Like, it's breakfast, you're not awake, boo. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I always thought it was funny. Let's see, if I'm gonna work from left to right, I guess I'm gonna need some blue for blueberry. Yeah, let's do this as like, um, uh, 
It's because they really need their bowl of sugar milk. That's true, right, man? Uh, Quinch says, I think he does that with most of his roles. I still have great disdain for Jim Carrey for his Grinch being more Fire Marshal Bill than the Grinch. Well, you're not wrong. He, um, he, I think mostly because of director Ron Howard, they were able to bring some nice emotion to that role. But, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Monique says his own personality lends itself to the impersonations so they could be similar and commingle. Yeah, I think that's true. Especially this last week, I felt like, you know, the same way that um, Baldwin, Alec Baldwin, had to sort of find his Trump. You know, Kerry's got to find his Biden. And, and let's face it, Biden doesn't have like a firecracker personality to begin with. So everything that Jim Kerry's going to do is going to have to be really amplified, you know. So but I think he just, so far, he's just getting better at it. So we'll see what he does. I really like Maya Rudolph as uh, Kamala Harris. I think she's doing really good. I mean, she's good anyway, right? But she's been especially good in that role. Uh, well, I guess before I start painting, I gotta remind everybody that we're gonna give away the hundredth sketch of Baby Yoda and IG Eleven. Woo! So uh, remember, if you're already a subscriber, you're entered to win. If you're a Patreon member, you're also entered to win. Um, if you're not either of those things, then please subscribe here on Twitch or join us on Patreon and you'll be entered to win. Also, anyone you refer who subscribes here on Twitch or becomes a member on Patreon is another entry for you. So uh, help us grow the channel and you could win this amazing 100th live sketch. Your support is much appreciated. <laughs> Let's do this. Cheers, 25 bits and says hooray for a giveaway. Monique says, am I still subbed? I don't know, are you? <laughs> I think every time I look, our subscribers have been falling, so. If not, now's the time to resub. It's always a good time to resub. Um, Boo Bear, uh, wasn't Boo Berry's uh, voice um, uh, oh, they were doing an impersonation of, uh, ah, crap. One of the, like, classic movie monster guys. Uh, Chaney? No. Who, who was the voice? Monique's like, I haven't been around in a while. I know, Monique, we missed you. I hope, are you still helping out with family stuff? Or are you more or less back home now? Wasn't Lon Chaney? Who was the who was the voice? Um, I don't know why I can. <laughs> Let's do this. Says it doesn't cost you a nickel to subscribe with Amazon Pickle. <laughs> uh, that made me laugh. Thank you, Lestudis. Uh, Monique says, "Nope, I did as much as I could." Well, I'm sure you did more than most would. So, good for you. Taking care of family is can be such a challenge. Really, Quinch Press, you're not going to help me out with the name of the old-time movie actor I'm trying to think of? You're just going to leave me hanging, man? Not Lon Chaney, not Boris Kar Kar Karloff. Anyway, it'll come to one of us, but I'm pretty sure Booberry was just an impersonation of that guy. Oh, I can't think of it. You guys know how it is. I start drawing and painting and just all the thoughts go out of my brain. It all just turns to, to mush. A booberry. Yes, master, I'm here to eat your blueberries. It 
It's going to bug me now. I can't think of it. I like that his eyelids are like super duper blue. Monique says, oh good, it only expired three days ago. Oh, perfect timing, Monique. Perfect timing. Uh, and I resub, so I didn't lose anything. Good job. I don't know how I don't know what, what the leeway is before they expunge you. <laughs> you still got your five months. Awesome. And you guys, you guys, you guys, I think six months is the Mad Hatter hat. I could be wrong, but I think so. Uh, Let's do this. By the way, I don't know how I missed last week's Tiki Tuesday. I was watching a live stream interview with Tony Cordos and the time just passed. Yeah, I figured. I was like, I joked. I was like, he's probably cheating on us with another stream right now. And I talked to Christy today. Uh, probably no TNT this week um, because her schedule is just so nuts right now. But I think next week we're going to try and squeeze it in. So just so you guys know. Um, obviously, like we, you know, I've said it before, but that show originally started out as just like four weeks during a break that she had. Um, but we're having fun with it. I know you guys like it too. So we're, we're trying to keep it alive in some way, shape, or form. It just may... It just won't be weekly, you know, at least not during her fall semester, especially now that they've, they've got her at eight, at eight classes, which is insane. Um, oh, sorry, ciao. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, let's do this permitted it. Thank you. Uh, Monique says, is this drawing a commission? No, um, all the ones I've been doing, the Halloween ones have just been for fun. Uh, but obviously, if anybody wants to purchase them, they will be available. So hit me up after if it's one you want. Or if you see one you want me to, to draw for you. We have a really cool Star Wars commission coming up. I don't know if I'll start it Thursday or if I'll start it next week. But it'll be a two-parter. It'll be a big a big one and full color. It'll be like 11 by 17 um, with two big characters and full color. So it's like a, it's a gift. So it'll be a really nice one. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, Chow Dime's like, you bastard, you cheated on us. So funny. Good to see you, Chow. I was just telling everyone I can't wait when you get a chance to mess around with some sculpts on the Octo Tiki to see what kind of ideas you have. I, uh, I have like one or two more things to clear off my to-do list and then I can probably focus on Octo Tiki in a major way as far as like getting the Kickstarter campaign put together and all that. So it's really unfortunately drug out longer than I'd hoped, but it seems to be how things are going right now, you know, with with COVID. Everything I'm doing is last minute and unplanned. So a lot of like, hey Brian, like to the like literally an artist that I hadn't talked to in five years, I got two covers to color for him this week. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm glad to know that A, I wasn't your first choice. And then B, you're figuring out in this pandemic who's reliable and who's not. Uh, Monique says, I kind of want this one. It's like my whole childhood. Uh, the good parts at grandma's, not the bad times. Yeah, well, uh, you know, send me a Facebook message afterwards and we'll work it out. You know that. Uh... Chow Time says, yeah, the clay will come in later this week. Oh, that's exciting. So Chow, um, your your experience is in sculpting in clay uh, versus like 3D modeling, right? Is that correct? I don't really have experience in either. I did some sculpting in college, but I never messed with it after that. And then I've utilized 3D models you know, when instructed to, like by clients and stuff, but I've never created a 3D model. Maybe now's the time to learn these things, but at the same time, I kind of feel like there's a value in collaborating with other creators, you know? Like there's something to be said for, you know, 
coming up with a design or drawing design and then letting someone else run with that and and interpret it. Uh, I think there's a, a creative value in that sort of thing. I mean, the same way that your favorite animated television shows or you know, something like Pixar or ILM. You know, it's not just one person, it's a team of people. So sometimes the results of those collaborations are are very worthwhile. Uh, Child Time says, yes, uh, 3D modeling is mainly mechanical, not organic. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, Monique redeemed to hydrate. Thank you, Monique. Cheers to you. And a posture check. Oh, need that. I don't feel like I'm too hunched over today, but we had to move our um, our storage unit. Oof, that was a day, let me tell you. So we had a 10 by 15 storage unit. And um, because of our book publishing, we had, we originally had three pallets of books and we were down to um, about a pallet and a half. And so I had to unload all those and load them up in the truck and all that kind of stuff. And, and so we moved from a 10 by 15 into a 10 by 10. So it was quite a, quite a bit of work. But, you guys, it's disgusting. One of the pallets of books had been infested with um, termites. And I've never really been around or seen termites before, and it was really gross. I mean, I guess you could just call them wood maggots, right? Because they were so disgusting. And so they'd eaten through the pallet, and they'd eaten into the bottom row of boxes of books. And so, you know, luckily the Kickstarter had had paid for the print cost of all the books, so we're not really out money other than product, but we had to uh, safely dispose of like a whole pallet worth of books. So it, it took was, what was already a long day and made it longer. So it was, uh, it was uh, quite the hassle. <laughs> but anyway, my shoulders are so sore from, you know, every one of those boxes is 50 pounds, and I think I, I moved whatever it is, whatever a pallet and a half worth is, so it was a lot. Um, Monique says, tell Christy to go have a baby Diet Coke. <laughs> Call her if you need to. I have too many points. Uh, let the conversation steer itself, because I got nothing. <laughs> I'm in random mode. Random teeny. Here you go. I will, I will text her right now. Uh, I know she's in the other room. I will let me send her a message right now, and I will tell her to Christy. Uh, Monique just redeemed Christy drinks a baby diet Coke. <laughs> And delivered. <laughs> okay, I sent her the note. We'll see. I think she might already have one in there, so it might have been perfect timing anyway. Uh, that's so funny. Baby Diet Coke break. All right, let's do Count Chocula's skin because it's kind of a weird yellowy, orangey color. And we're already messing with the yellows and the reds, so that should be perfect. So, Chow, you were talking about organics versus mechanical stuff. Can uh, can you, if you're allowed to, can you tell us some of the some of your experiences and what kind of products that you've made and that sort of stuff? Oh, Christy says lol. So yeah, she got the message. Yeah, that's about the right color, I think. Yeah, that looks just like it. Okay. Oh, and I need to get the information, you guys. Uh, Wednesday night, Christy is going to be on uh, an all-female creators live stream with some pretty big names uh, in comics. Um, I'll see if I can get pull that up and see if it tells me what service that's going to be on. I think it's the same the same one that I did with Chaos Comics. Not the same stream, but the same uh, 
service. But let me see what, if that's YouTube or if that's something else. But I'll look here in just a minute. But I think it's going to be like uh, Trina Robbins and Deb Tucci and uh, Christy and um, oh, a cosplayer or two. I can't think of her name all of a sudden. But I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up so you guys can check it out Wednesday if you get a chance. Go on and show Christy a little support and a little love. But it should be really cool. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. While I'm working here. Uh, oh my gosh, all this political spam in my mailbox. Okay, here's the thing. Okay, so here's the guests that are going to be on there, guys. Listen to this lineup. So Trina Robbins, right, huge in the comic world. Amanda Connor, another huge in the comic world person. Um, Fran Francisca Plito, which is Brian Plito of Cop and Comics' wife. She runs the company. Uh, Dr. Christy Miller. Uh, Sora Sung, who is a publisher and artist. I don't know her, but that name sounds familiar. Uh, Deborah Tucci and Joni Brosis, who's um, an artist and a cosplayer. So it's a pretty good lineup. Um, and so it's going to be uh, Wednesday, October 21st, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on the Pop XP episode Women in Comics. I don't know what service Pop XP is on, so I don't know if that's YouTube or Twitch or what that is. But um, it seems like it's going to be really, really cool. So. Let me just put that text in the chat for you guys. Oh, let's do it. says, I love Sarah. Oh, good. I thought the name sounded real, really familiar. I just didn't recognize what, like, what uh, comics and stuff I knew her from. So I just put that info in the chat. But um, it should be, I mean, that's an amazing lineup, you know. So I would say if you're around tomorrow and you can stream that, Again, I, I'm sorry for not knowing what service it's on. I was just CC'd on one of the emails where they were t talking to Christy about it. But I think if you Google the um, the title, Pop XB, uh, it'll probably come up. But I mean, with that lineup of people, it should be really good. And so, you know, we want to, it's focused on the, the women creators, but I think that probably Brian Plito and Billy Tucci will probably uh, make a guest appearance at some point in there would be my guess. Um, uh, Monique says, oh my gosh, I just saw that Krusty Krab picture in the little slideshow. Can we do a Krusty Krab mashup in the desert? Oh, that would be hilarious. Yeah, that Krusty Krab, that was actually a back cover illustration I did for SpongeBob Comics. And I loved working with SpongeBob. Um, they were so nice to work with, but unfortunately, when when Disney bought Fox, that all the whole comics thing went away. Um, because we had plans for me to do a lot more with them, uh, and I don't know what all went down, but with the when when Disney bought Fox, the entire like Bongo Comics thing just just went away. So I don't know if that's Matt Groening's decision or some internal thing. I'm not sure. Um. Chow Time says, I have a friend that has a kiln, which is most likely make a small batch of my own tiki mugs. Oh, that's cool. I was looking at a thermal detonator tiki mug and even an A-Wing. Yeah, you were showing me that A-Wing sketch. That was a pretty cool idea. And of course, like I always say, you can get away with stuff I can't, so you should go for it. <laughs> oh, and I don't know if you guys saw that I took the Ghostbuster sketch that we did last week and I turned it into an actual t-shirt design. Um, so you can get it on a t-shirt, on a magic mug where the art appears when you put in your hot coffee, uh, a regular mug, or a sticker. So um, I've only sold one or two of those, which is kind of surprising to me. But I think the Facebook reach right now is really, really poor. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, just to connect the sketches to the real product. You know, I've got them up on my store right now, and uh, uh, I can give you guys a code to save some money on that so if you use the code uh, spooky 15 
at octopolis.com. Uh, you'll save 15% off your entire order. So um, if you want to help support me and you like Ghostbusters, go grab one of those. Uh, but I'm trying to take more of the stuff that we do here on the stream and then, you know, take it and turn it into like full artwork. Uh, and that's been one of them. And the response has been pretty good. Just um, surprised I've only sold one or two so far. But I appreciate Quench Press. I showed him an early version of the design and he gave me some, some good feedback and helped me dial it in. So that's, that was really nice. I think I was just trying to do too much with it. You know, sometimes I take these things from sketch to uh, to final. It's just there's like too much temptation to to try to add too much detail and crap to them. You know, I have to remind myself like keep it simple, stupid, which is usually my mantra. All right, keep it simple. That's what I try to do: clean, simple. So that it looks good on a variety of things. All right, let's see if we can make a make a brownish color here for Count Chocula. That's too green. We need way more red than that. More red. Give me all the red. Yeah, Chow. I like those ideas. Though those are really good ideas. You should totally do that. Especially if you have the ability to do like small batch stuff, that's incredible. Really incredible. All right, working on this brown. It's a very warm, chocolatey brown. Imagine that, that Count Chocula would have a chocolatey brown color. Oh, I think we got it. I think we got it, okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's. That's looking pretty brown, I think. Add a little bit of water to that. Mix it up really good. It's always nice to see it on the palette. You can see the like the little streaks of like green and blue and stuff in there where I mix the color up. Uh, Chow says. How goes the commission? Still staying afloat. A little slow, a little slow right now. Or a lot slow, I guess, if I'm being honest. So, uh, But I do have the one big Star Wars commission that just I just landed that one today. Uh, that'll be a two-parter. Uh, I'll, I'll draw it on one day and I'll paint it on the next, uh, or the next stream. But yeah, pretty slow right now. Uh, Joe, Joe Crony and I were just talking <laughs> back and forth the last couple days that, you know, normally like January, February, is our slowest time of the year and normally this is the busiest time of year and uh, luckily comics have picked up just a little bit right now but uh, everything else is really like all of a sudden just just died off and not just for me for like most people i know so it's a it's a little weird time uh, but i plan on reminding people that if they want sketches and stuff for holiday time like now's the time to talk to me so um, but I'm going to do another piece of artwork for that bakery, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and I've got a, a voiceover person who I'm actually behind on their project now. Um, I think we did a, a, a concept sketch for her character on here a while ago, and I need to do some like full digital uh, character designs for her. And if those are approved, I'll do some more artwork for her. But a little slow, a little slow. It's one of those things I feel like I, I shouldn't complain or I can't complain because I know there's people much, much worse off than I am. But it's still it's still scary when you don't know, you know, from week to week. You know, I'm so I was so used to, like I was talking to Joe about it and I said, and you know, I I've told you guys too, I said, um, you know, when I started this channel in March, I thought it was going to be temporary. And, you know, Joe and I were talking about it just last night that we sort of both avoided things like Twitch and Patreon over the years because we were so busy with, 
you know, paid client work that there was just no freaking possible way to try to do things like live streams or squeeze in submissions and that kind of thing. It was just, it wasn't possible. And now we're both trying to survive and live on that. So it's this weird I- irony, I guess, but uh, I certainly can't say thank you enough to uh, everyone who, who has got a commission sketch because, um, you know, it's it's been what's keeping the lights on, that's for sure. But it's a weird year. I mean, not just for me, for all of us, right? So it's definitely strange times. You know, I saw, like Aaron LaPriesty, right? He's a good friend of mine. I've known him forever. One of the best comic book artists in the business, like hands down. Like no one would argue that, right? Like he's one of the best. And he's pretty much unemployed right now, you know? And he was joking online. He's like, well, I guess being unemployed, I get to catch up on sketch commissions and stuff. But I know that he's terrified. You know, he's like me. He's worked professionally since he was a teenager, you know, in comics and He's never done anything else. He's never made a living any other way. And so you're almost like at, you're paralyzed in a way. You're like, I don't know what to do. Hey, there's Evan. I can hear him. So it's definitely strange times. Good to hear you, Evan. Um, Monique says, Joe's finally getting to my sketch commission. It's awesome. I figured he was super busy because it's been a long time. Um, I ordered at the same time as my Kaz and Gabe one from you. Well, now, you know, we know we know Joe's a little slower than I am on these things. But he, my understanding is, is that he's ready to do commissions now. So I think everything else is that he was working on is kind of done. So um, I think he will be on top of everyone's commissions for the time being. And he launched his Patreon yesterday, I think. So he's he's trying to... You know, do what the rest of us are doing and just try to reach out and connect with fandom and collectors and other creators. Oh, thank you, Evan. I'm glad you liked that one today. I had a lot of fun with that. I hope you guys did too. Um, I, I can't tell you how excited I am by the new Procreate 5 and everything they're doing. So it's fun to, to get on with you guys today and talk about it and clearly it's it's new to me as well um so you know even though i've used procreate in the past this new version is it looks very similar but its functionality is quite different so you know even though i'm sort of uh the instructor it's more of an exploration at this point right we're all kind of figuring out together so it's it's fun uh, Chow says, who is this artist? Oh, Joe Caroni. So, Chow, he's the one that I always... If you've, been, you've been to Star Wars Celebration. Joe and I always have a booth together at Star Wars Celebration. So, Joe's how I got into Star Wars. Because I was already working in comics. And I met him when I was probably 18 or 19. So, about the time I got, I got into comics. And um, uh, I met him at Mid-Ohio Con. And he was already doing Star Wars stuff then. And so for, I don't know, over a decade, or well over a decade, I was doing all the color and paint for his Star Wars art. And then, um, whatever it's been, five or six years ago, I started doing my own Star Wars illustrations for Lucasfilm. And about the same time, he had an opportunity to go work with a a different group within Lucasfilm that I'm working with. And, um part of that opportunity was he needed to do his own color and paint because they were doing like fully, like each artist was responsible for doing these like fully finished illustrations. And so um, he started doing his own paint work at that time. Uh, but we're still we're still buddies and we still collaborate once in a while. And we, we tend to, if there's another Star Wars celebration, we'll see, we tend to still share booth space. Uh, thanks for the cheer, Evan. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Monique says, like I said, I figured he was still busy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think he's just now kind of getting caught up to that stuff, and he's ready for commission, so. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. 
yeah, so Chow's asking about how it's spelled, and Monique spelled it for him, yeah. So yeah, you'll definitely find him. Um, he's got a Twitch channel, but I think he's only streamed once or twice, ever. But maybe now that he's uh, launching his Patreon, maybe he'll start streaming some more, too, so... You know, it's tough. I mean, trying to balance little bits of like client work with uh, the commitments of doing sketches and stuff. It's, it's hard to find balance, but it's all right. It's all worth it. But yeah, it was good to see you again today, Evan. Um, nice to see you in class. Nice to see a couple of people show up for class this time. I thought it was one of our more uh, successful, you know, we're trying to find times when people can show up and participate. So it's nice to see that happening. And especially since Adobe Max is this week, I thought it'd be funny to do not necessarily an anti Adobe class, but an alternative to Adobe class, you know. Because I use plenty of Adobe apps, I'm not anti. Um, but I'm also the first to be like, hey, you know, there's other stuff out there. Oh, thanks for sharing the, the link, Monique. There you go. Yeah, Joe's a great guy, fantastic artist. You'll probably never meet another Star Wars artist who knows more about Star Wars than Joe does. He is totally legit, so. He's the only guy I think that can keep up with or even be out Star Wars day Filoni, right? So that gives you an idea. He's like. You know, I always joke about how when I start drawing and stuff, my memory just fades because I'm just so focused on the art. And Joe's definitely the opposite. Like. I think the more when he's drawing, he like more of the Star Wars stories and names and stuff come to him. So he can be very entertaining like that. I think one of the reasons we get along is our art styles are unique. They're not the same. And so... We never really feel like we're competing with one another. It's all just complimentary, which is fun. It feels good, you know. Count Chocula! I feel like, so, you know, these guys were all created in the 70s, I think, so you know, around the same time as like Super Friends and stuff like that. I'm like, does Count Chocula and Frankenberry and Booberry, do they have any like superpowers or anything? Or is there only power to like eat cereal? I don't know. I never really thought about it before until just now. I'm like, can they do magic or are they just spooky? I kept hoping to have some good news to share with you guys about the Star Wars Celebration Art Show. But um, so far that hasn't happened. We were sort of under the impression that they were going to maybe make a, like a virtual Celebration Art Show. But again, so far, no, no news on that front. So that's a little... A little disappointing, but we'll see. Maybe something will still happen this year. So Evan, after today's class, are you more revved up about Procreate or less or the same 
Because I know, like you were saying about doing the flat color stuff in there, it's still not really at a pro level yet for flats. It's kind of weird, right? Like all the things we take for granted in Photoshop and just one or two of those things that don't get replicated on iPad can make it a, a really big challenge. Kind of almost funny how that how that works like that, you know. Oh, we need eyebrows. Oh, forty messages were deleted by the moderator. Uh oh, what'd you do, Monique? The the auto bots going after you. Oh, it looks like Monique found some some uh, reference for or some information on these guys, but the paragraphs were too long. <laughs> you get the whole article. Oh no! Well, let's see what Monique does say. She says uh, Levine doesn't remember what suggestions she gave uh, Jaffe, other than two he focused on: parodies of Dracula and Frankenstein, which they dubbed Count Chocula and Frankenberry. So wait, is this Al Jaffe from Mad Magazine? Is that who created these? Because that'd be really cool. Uh, the whole concept was monsters, but monsters who were scaredy cats. They'd act tough, and then they'd be terrified by the sight of a little kitten. Evan says, I'm really painting like Bob Ross. Uh, Improcreate, Evan says. That's funny. <laughs> yes, poor Monique. I don't know what the what the paragraph limit is, but it's pretty long. I know that when we first started out, people were getting those warnings on what I thought were pretty short messages. So it, it's, it's set up pretty long now. Seems like every week we find another reason to be upset with a chat bot. Count Chocula. Count Chocula kind of looks like David Letterman. Hmm. But I don't think David Letterman would have been anything other than like a local weather person back when these guys were created. So must just be happenstance. Now, the question is, can we make a good looking pink or not? I have to bust out the white. Oh, Tony Jaffe. Uh, no, I think Al Jaffe, I think, was an artist at Mad Magazine. So I'm not sure if I know who Tony Jaffe is. But I could be wrong about that, too. You guys know me. When I'm drawing and painting, psh, I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Say the wrong names, all that stuff. Oh, Evan says, I posted a pic I'm working on right now on Discord. Okay. I will have to check that out. I usually have Discord open on the TNT shows, but I don't always have it go on the rest of the time. I have to say though, doing the iPad on Discord was much less hardcore on the computer. Like everything seemed to flow and work smoother than doing Photoshop on Discord. That was interesting today. And the recording I thought turned out better too. So I don't know what, what the differences are there, but. Monique says, Al Jaffe is an American cartoonist, notable for his work in Mad Magazine. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought his name was Al Jaffe. So yeah, I don't know who the other one is then. But I have a friend who worked at an ad agency and did some of the package designs for the very first Star Wars toys, the like play sets and stuff. And so in my collection, I have the actual photographs that were used on some of the like early playset boxes and stuff. 
so there's always those oddball people out there at ad agencies and stuff who worked on these characters who we may not know them from other things, but they're still amazing creators, you know? All right. Time for some pink. Let's pink it up. Let's see if this is too thick or too thin. We'll find out momentarily. Oh, that's a pretty good pink. That'll work. I think that works for a Frankenberry pink. It's a little on the opaque side because I had to mix a lot of white in there to get that to look that color, but I think it'll be okay. The only problem with putting that much white in it is that it can start to cover some of the black lines, so I'll have to be careful about that. Do we remember, do these guys, do they have any catchphrases? I mean, like, Toucan Sam had, like, the follow your nose thing. These guys had to have catchphrases, right? I'm sure as a kid I knew them, but I don't, I don't know them now. Do you guys remember the Creepy Crawlers toy? Um, there was recently, I think I shared it on social media, but there was recently a really good uh, video retrospective about that toy and how I think it was originally a Hasbro or a Mattel back in the 60s. And they let the, the trademark or, or whatever expire on it because it wasn't that big of a seller. And so some other company got the rights and started using the name in the 80s and they made just gazillions of dollars making creepy crawlers. And then apparently they sold the rights at just the right time because the company who bought the rights from them like totally failed, I guess, after a while. It was interesting. It was like a nice long, you know, 15 or 20 minute video about the history of creepy crawlers. And if you're a geek like me, that's the kind of stuff you like. But it wasn't Toy Galaxy because I watch a lot of their videos or I listen to a lot of their videos, but it was similar to one of theirs. Maybe it was Toy Galaxy. No, I don't remember. I like the host though on to on Toy Galaxy. He's got a, a big personality. And he always seems a little grumpy, like he doesn't want to be there, which somehow makes it more charming. I don't know why, but. Frankenberry. Uh, Monique says, Tony Jaffe is on LinkedIn. He's a brand builder, expert, writer, and voiceover artist. His proudest of his six Clios, one Con Gold Lion, one Gold Mobius, two Pittsburgh Addy Best of Shows, uh, his two campaigns, Tricks are for Kids, and OOO Ice Cold Milk and Oreo Cookie. Lasted over 20 years. Plus the big Fig Newton. Wow. Well... Clearly a lifelong Addy, ad guy, and working with food companies I think would be fun. I, I only got to work when I was in an ad agency with pharmaceuticals and sports equipment, but like not good sports equipment, like low rent sports equipment, and I did not enjoy either. It's probably why I went into comics, is that I was so disillusioned my first year in the ad, ad business especially working with the pharmaceutical companies. It's just like my first big campaign was Nicorette and Nicoderm. And once I saw behind the curtain on that stuff, I wanted nothing to do with it. And so that drove me from comics had just been sort of like a fun, a fun,
fun thing I've been doing to just being like, okay, this is going to be like my full-time gig. <laughs> Chow's like, does that make you mad, man? Let me tell you, <laughs> it wasn't mad, man, but there was definitely plenty of shenanigans going on at the ad agencies. The one I was at, it was mostly the men sleeping with the other men behind their wives' backs. So, a different twist on Mad Men. Uh, Quinch Press says the Count and Frank argued over whose cereal was better. Then Boo would show up and they would try to push him away. And then when he mysteriously reappeared, they got scared of him. Oh, I remember that now. Okay, Quinch, who who was the famous old-timey spooky movie actor that Boo Berry's voice was supposed to be an impersonation of? Because I can't think of it. It's not Lon Chaney. It's one of those, like, it's not even on the tip of my brain. I literally can't come up with it, but... Hold on, Monique. I'll get to that in just a second. I just don't want this pink to dry on me. I'm still painting on it here. Uh, Monique says, Count Chocolate is a vampire that ostensibly eats only the chocolate cereal. He's named after his voice and image are an homage to Bela Lugosi. Count Dracula. Count Chocolate has been known to take the form of a bat. It's also suggested that he is immortal. Uh... Ah, Pierre Laurie. Oh my god, thanks for posting that, Monique. Uh, Booberry is the name of an advertising character from this breakfast cereal. He's a ghost that eats only blueberry favorite cereal. His voice and appearance are reminiscent of famed actor Pierre Laurie. Yes, that's what I was trying to think of the whole time was Pierre Laurie. Thank you so much. He can be corporeal or solid, invisible or visible. He uses rattling chains to cause a visceral effect in those observing him. And Quinch Press says Peter Laurie. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Like for an hour, I've been trying to come up with Peter Laurie. And I was just like, ah, what's that guy's name? <laughs> All right. So now we need a darker, like almost like a raspberry pink for the outfit. This will be tough. I'm going to have to add just like the teeniest, tiniest touch of blue without like spoiling the whole look of everything. We might, might have it. Just a little bit of water. Give me my paint. All right. Let's see if this is dark enough and different enough or not. It's close. It can be a little darker though. Uh, Monique says, Frankenberry's voice and appearance are an homage to Boris Karloff's portrayal of the Frankenstein monster. It's not bad. It could be just a little bit darker, though. Let's go a little bit more red. Instead of 50 shades of gray, it's like 50 shades of pink, right? We're just trying to get it just slightly different than his skin, but not overly so. Okay, now let's see where we're at. I know that it's weird, you know, monsters like Frankenstein and Dracula are public domain, but then like 
some versions of them are still belong to like Universal Studios and stuff. So I know like on comics, uh, DC will never put the bolts in Frankenstein's neck because that's something that Universal claims makes theirs unique to them and they'll like sue people and stuff. Uh, Quinch says, be right back. Uh, Monique says, I love how you did Booberry. He's fabulous. Thank you, Monique. Thanks so much. I'm trying to make these guys look cool. Well, you know, with all, I love Halloween so much, so I've been just been trying to have fun with these Halloween sketches and just, you know, make them the way I would want them to look if I was a kid watching this stuff. A little throwback to those days. Trying to get Frank's a little more. That contrast between the pinks really makes a difference. You can really, really see it now. Because if it's too similar, it'll just look like he's naked. We can't have that. Can't have naked Frankenberry running around. Nobody wants to see that. I mean, you guys, except for like Ms. Frankenberry. Did they ever do female versions of the serial monsters? That'd be fun to do, maybe. If they did them, I don't remember seeing them. Maybe it's like G.I. Joe and Jim. They're like, oh, the boys control the remotes. We'll just make all the serial monsters boys. You're like, what? I saw a really good SCTV clip from the 80s pop up, and it was a play on kids say the darndest things, but it was women say the darndest things. But the darndest things were all like, basically women responding to men being totally sexist. So I'm like, you know, even in the 80s when I was a kid and didn't know, you know, women were having the same arguments about sexism that they're still having today. It's kind of ridiculous, you know. It's like, can't these old men just give up and just let everybody have equality for a change. And that goes for cartoon monsters too. Oh, Monique says, uh, by the way, Jeff says, thanks for your comments on the pics of him. Yeah, man, those are awesome. What what great style and fashion choices. I, I love that stuff. And especially now when there's fewer reasons to or harder to get motivated to get you know, dressed up and look nice and good for him. Good for him. And especially like you were saying he's taking it serious and you know, even like the undergarments are like period undergarments and stuff. That's really cool. I don't know too many people who are who are that dedicated, so I dig it. Uh, Monique says he orders the suits from London. Wow, that's so cool. That's so amazing. I've seen it. Uh, now, he probably has better stuff, but I've seen a company pop up. I can't think of what it's called now. Um, but it's not like, it's not one of their old fancy Seville Row places, but someplace over there in, you know, London or, Ireland or something that can do like the the tweeds that I like and they were like surprisingly reasonable and I was like ooh I, I could I could if it was a normal year and I knew I was going to do you know a comic con or something I was like I could talk myself into that I 
because most of my vintage pieces are just like thrift store finds and that that's getting a lot harder than it used to be a lot harder than it used to be whenever I go through Palm Springs I always try to stop at the thrift stores because they usually have still some good stuff but it's definitely not as plentiful as it once was. <laughs> Chow says, Tweet is so hot. I don't know if you mean that in the um, Paris Hilton way or in the way that you're uncomfortable, but I like Tweed. A friend of mine used to call himself the Flannel Jedi, and I always joked that I was either the Plaid Jedi or the Tweed Jedi. I'm not sure which. One, if not both of those things, though. All right. There you go, Frankenberry. Now you're starting to look pretty good. Now we just need our, our third shade, which is almost like a pure red, so that'll be easier. <laughs> Chow says temperature, lol. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I grew up having to, to participate in church activities about four times a week. Very religious family. And I had to wear a three-piece suit all the time to those events. And so I'm very comfortable wearing, you know, pants, jacket, vest, etc. Even on the warm, pretty much the warmest days. So it doesn't really phase me too much. But I know especially if I'm at... Epcot or Comic Con, and people are like, "Oh my God, aren't you dying?" And I'm like, "Well, maybe I'm uncomfortable a little bit, but no, I'm not dying." And Quinch Press is back. Lestudis says, "Jedi Master Qui Gon jeans." That's pretty good. And Lestudis. Qui Gon jeans. There's an SNL skit waiting to happen right there. All right, Frankenberry. So now, just got his last little details. And this is almost, almost red. It's like barely pinkish. So we've got like the light pink and then like the raspberry pink and then the like the hot magenta kind of color to, to round out his trifecta of strawberry inspired hues. Um, let's do this as Viceroy Corduroy Newt Gunray. <laughs> okay, that was really good. Viceroy Corduroy. I can tell you haven't, you definitely haven't put any thought into this. As always, with this pure magenta red, it's going to take two coats. I can already tell. Two coats. I've been looking for an excuse to try out some gouache paints. Maybe this Star Wars one I have coming up. Maybe I'll go ahead and get on Amazon and order those or something. Hey, are any of you guys watching the um, Animal Kingdom show on Disney Plus? Uh, Christy and I are only two episodes in, but I gotta say I'm quite enjoying that. Interesting look behind the scenes at Animal Kingdom, and uh, especially 
some of the things where the animals are sort of, you know, encouraged to do X or Y, but left to their own devices to if they want to do it or not. That's that's very interesting to me. There's some pretty interesting animal psychology going on there. But the most recent episode where they had to take the the manatee in for a like a scan, that was pretty impressive. And to lift him out through the roof of the building at Epcot with a crane and all this crazy stuff. And I kind of think like, you know, who else but Disney would spend the money to do that kind of animal care, you know? I don't think your average zoo could afford it. But yeah, if you haven't had a chance to see that yet, it's it's been pretty good. Two coats. It takes two coats. Oh, Monique shared 100 bits. Thank you, Monique. Thank you so much. I have to remember to run the credits today since we actually have some cheers. And we've got to get psyched up for Tiki Tuesday tonight. Some parts came from my barbecue grill today. If I can get that barbecue working, then phase two of that will be to start working on the backyard and bringing in some tiki torches and stuff. So we'll be one step closer. That barbecue, man, I'll tell you, I, I probably should have just given up on that thing. It was in such disrepair. But after I looked up and saw that it was like $3,000 when it was new, I've kind of been bound and determined to bring it back to life. So I... I got a synthetic wire wheel and try to bring back the stainless steel as best I could. It'd be, it'd be better if I had access to like a sandblaster or something, but I don't. So, but the way it works is the heat comes up into this like a uh, stainless steel. They're not grids. They're like like tubes on racks, and then that's what radiates the heat out, and that only works. If the stainless steel is pretty clean and it had been very corroded over the years and gunked up with food and grease and stuff so clean those up pretty good well I've been waiting for these parts to come and I had the grill where I could I could manually light it it would it would catch after all I rebuilt I told you guys I think that the burners had just been held up from the bottom of the grill with rocks which is insane so you know I Got some sheet metal and fabric fabbed up some little brackets and put that all together and that's that's all correct now. So uh, I've been waiting on the correct igniters because they're out of production and there's some company in Florida that uses these like uh, Chinese igniters and puts them onto the right kind of brackets and stuff and then I have to take that kit and then put it onto the brackets I have. So it'll still be a little bit of a project but I can actually get it to where it'll push button start safely then I should be able to reassemble the whole thing and, and cook on it so and then with that project done then I can turn my attention into doing some some cool stuff in the backyard but I kind of felt like I couldn't couldn't move forward unless I got that working because otherwise we have to you know come up with a plan B or C or something Let's just do a really light wash in here. There we go. That looks pretty nice. What do you think, Monique? Did I miss anything? Favoritest cereal monsters together at last. It's destiny. Uh, 
Over in this area, you think, Monique? Yeah, this is the cape. The cape like comes down and up. But you think it should be darker in here? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, she says, yeah, okay. I can do that. I might have to mix up some more brown, but I can definitely do that. I think, this, I think the brown I had before is already too far gone. Let's see, yeah, I think so. I think it's, yeah, I'll have to mix those in new. Dun, dun. More brown, and you get brown, and you get brown. And here's some brown for you. Man, I don't know what it is about these pigments, but the whatever this blue is, is so overpowering. Like, the minute I introduce any blue into this, it just turns green, and I have to go back and counter with a bunch of red. It's almost like the blue pigment must either be cheaper to buy or it's just so much stronger because it just, it, it's like the pigments aren't balanced between the different colors in the tube. And it just, you can have like a giant glob of red and a giant, giant glob of yellow. And the minute you put any blue in there, it's just like, bam. All right, let's start with that. A little bit more red. A little bit more red. A little bit of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think we just need a second coat on this. Got a little thin over here. Hey, what do you know? You know, for eyeballing that, <laughs> it's a pretty good match. It's not not bad at all. I mean, I guess it better be. That's that's like my job, right? So I better be to mix up one batch of color that matches the previous batch of color. Otherwise, I'm not not much of an artist if I can't. Yeah, this will look good. This will frame him up a little bit more too, I think. Look nice. Try to get this to blend a little, a little more smoothly. Yeah, it's just a little hard to get it around Frank's elbow, I think, but we'll make it work. Uh, man, well, while I'm working on this, I want to say thanks to all of you uh, who follow this channel, and especially those of you who subscribe. And special thanks to everybody who has become a member on Patreon. Um, I have to tell you guys that is making more of a difference to us right now than you can possibly imagine. So, um, you know, if you have, if you like this content and you think you have a friend who might also like this content, uh, you know, invite them to check it out. You know, it's free to watch the stream, free to chat. And then, you know, if you want to use a membership, if you connect to Amazon Prime, it's even free to subscribe. So uh, you can support this channel and support me uh, without spending any of your own money if you want to. And if you do have money to spend, then you can uh, you can do cheers and bits and sound alerts, and you can even become a member on Patreon. And I try not to talk about it too much, but it does make a difference. So, and Christy and I really do appreciate everyone's support. Uh, so we thank you. We really do. 
because uh, I'm here to entertain you guys. But the more people that we have subscribed, um, the easier it is for me to to take the time to do these things. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, <laughs> Farley says, but what if we have no friends? <laughs> That's funny, Farley. That's our 2020 problems. And thank you for the cheer, Farley. I really appreciate it. It's very good to see you today. And Farley's like, womp, womp. Uh, Evan says, I watched a documentary on Bob Ross and hated his hair, but had to leave it because it was what, oh, he hated his hair, but had to leave it because he was known, what he's known for. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. That makes sense. Uh, well, I like that better. Monique, what do you think? I think that all looks more even and chocolatey now. It might just touch up his eyebrows a little bit. What do you think, Farley? Are you are you a fan of the cereal monsters? Is this something that was part of your childhood? I know it was for me. And to see these come out every Halloween time, you always get a little excited. And Christy normally buys a box of Frankenberry, and then I don't think she ever eats it on occasion, but I think usually she gets excited, she buys the box, and then it sits all Halloween, and then it's gone. <laughs> oh, good. Monique likes it. Okay. Thanks, Monique. I, I trust your eye. You always spot things, so I appreciate it. Uh, Farley says, I remember seeing the characters, but my mom had us eat kicks, and I thought I was square. This one's just for you, Farley. There's a square just for you for having to eat Kix, man. Kix is like the healthiest cardboard tasting cereal that was ever made. Luckily, I had a mother who wasn't a mother and wasn't around. And so all my breakfast was like cookie crisp. <laughs> Frankenberry. Farley's like, right? Cardboard in a box. Yeah. Like Kix is the worst. Oh my gosh. Oh, Monique says, buy, buy Count's Coattail. Buy Count's Coattail. Oh, we sign at the left at an angle. Yeah, 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 I can do that. Oh, at an angle? Do you want it like this way or something? At an angle? I can do that, just let me know. Like, like this direction? Because normally I would just go straight, but I can go at an angle if you want me to. Yeah, a little, she says. Okay, I'll do that. Um, Farley says she tried to get us to eat grape nuts, but we refused. <laughs> grape nuts, that was like the proto granola or something. All right, there we go. Our favorite childhood spooky cereal monsters. Woo! Uh, Quinch says trivia question What was the first superhero movie that Jon Favreau appeared in? Hint, hint, he was just standing in the background and had no lines. Uh, was it like a Jay and Silent Bob movie or something? I don't remember. There was a bunch of stuff, though, when he was younger. <laughs> Monique says, my mom ate grape nuts. I didn't like them. Or I didn't hate them. Evan says, it's like eating rocks. I don't know, guys. I think Farley wins. I can't think of a cereal with less flavor than Kix. Uh, Monique says Rudy. Well, I'll let everyone guess. In the meantime, we'll run the cra 